So why a model of a toy? Was there anything behind it? Were you able to find something about it? If you push it down, uh, you can uh, identify it will not fall down. Now. There is a uh, reason behind it uh, because uh, uh, it will really connect to the people who are living in the earth. Because uh, if anyone pushes a person uh, down, he will not fall. Instead, he will stand up in his life and get very bold and uh, able to face their problems. How beautifully history has taught you. I'm extremely impressed and humbled by the learnings that you have had. The whole point of uh, it leaning and then again falling erect is a beautiful learning and you should adopt it throughout your life. The advantage of actually photogrammatizing a larger artifact and then making a larger uh, actual physical statue and then photogrammatizing it and then later making a smaller artifact is that you'll be able to capture more, more details. Yes, sir. It's like taking a larger picture and then making a small composition. So you'll be able to do better. This is a Vyala, which is a, a mythical character, which is a composite of various animals. Its um, face, as you can see, has lion. It has a, it usually has a tusk like that of an elephant. The body is that of a tiger, sometimes completely lion, sometimes partly tiger. And um, it also has bird-like features. Usually, uh, they are, um, you know, surrounding the exterior part of the temple. That is actually a warrior that you would see on the back of uh, the uh, Vyala. So, one hand we should be holding the tusk and the other with the dagger. The patrons were usually kings and they being warriors, this, they, warriors in different activities are often shown on them. Mathura School of Art developed along with Gandhar School of Art. Gandhar was more Greek oriented whereas Mathura School uh, is actually known to have Indian features and uh, it was more like an Indianized school as against uh, the Gandhar School. Both developed under Kushans and um, therefore what difference that you would see is uh, Gandhar would have Buddhist sculptures more and Mathura would also have these uh, Hindu or Brahmanical sculptures and also along with the direction they um, tell us about emotions different kind of emotions that Shiva is usually shown to repel when he is along with his wife you know the Vama form that is there a Soumya kind of a form when he is angry that Radra kind of form so all these emotions are also being shown to these um, faces so that's why the Mukha aspect came in and then we see Shiva's sculptures coming Whenever we are picking the artifacts and we are thinking of taking photographs to convert them to photogrammetry and all, mm -hmm. it is also important to see how much lighting it is getting and are all the parts of the artifact well lit so that when you are clicking the photograph, you are able to you know, see the, uh, the impact of light from all the angles. So you get all the details etc. in there. It is about uh, we trying to find stories. Even in the word history, there is a story, isn't it? The more you are interested in stories, the more you like stories, it grows on you. And that is very clearly visible. This image would have been constantly touched. So the stone part, those places are shiny. So whenever you're clicking photos in dark, there's going to be okay. that that's going to come. Photogrammetrizing uh, shiny objects is very difficult because then mm -hmm. there are highlights and the computer is not able to identify uh, from which angle are you taking the photograph from. So one way to do that is uh, like powder it with talcum powder and make it done. Okay. And then you do photogrammetry. There is a case of uh, that textures will be missing. So then for that you have to do another texture uh, photograph and then apply that. The best way to do a photogrammetry is like taking the artifact into a more controlled environment as much as possible and then click like yes. with good quality cameras and we will have more details to uh, like ponder upon. The change which I saw in my students last year, uh, the interest level, not just in the participants, but in the students 
uh, other than those ones also there was a little level of increase in their interest because as you say otherwise they consider history a pretty dry subject collaborating technology with history is something which is actually the buzz here it appears that the past is far more interesting than we give it uh, credit more than the study of the past the history equips us with a certain discipline actually studying of history and english literature equips you with a very important skill called critical thinking critical thinking is what is what a historian does when they have when they are faced with evidence of various kinds you know it could be a physical artifact it can be a heard story it can be some texts and things like that and from all these things the historian has to use the facility of critical thinking to piece together what must have happened in the past engineers know how to solve a problem but it's people from the humanities who know which problem to solve and critical thinking is a very important skill that at least the humanities people learn at quite great depth